In our last video, we learned how to understand acne by understanding more about the various types and forms of acne, what its symptoms are and what can cause acne. If you missed out on that video, click the link in our description box to check that out first. Today, we'll be focusing on how you can manage your acne conditions with the various treatment options and tools that are available. Before we jump right into it, if you suspect that you have acne, the first thing to do is to get a diagnosis from a dermatologist to allow them to examine your skin. And from there, they will identify the types of lesions and develop a treatment plan that is suitable for your skin. After all, everyone's skin condition and skin type is different. We can grade acne into three main subtypes. Firstly, grade one or mild acne. Typically, mostly comedons or what we call whiteheads and blackheads with very few papules and pustules. Two, we can grade it as moderate. In moderate acne, there are more inflammatory papules and pustules on the face and still some comedones as well. Lastly, severe acne or nodulocystic acne. Typically, there's more inflammation and there will be nodules and cysts admixed with other papules and pustules as well. With skincare treatment, we must first consider topicals and skincare because that is at the bottom of the treatment ladder. So if you've got just mild acne, such as comedonal acne, let's start with simple skincare changes as well as topical remedies that you can get. Firstly, let's talk about suitable skincare. If you have acne-prone skin, it is typically oily or a combination skin type. In those cases then, utilizing a water-based moisturizer or a lightweight cream would be more suitable than using thicker, more occlusive moisturizers. Next, we can consider over-the-counter pharmacy spot treatments. You can consider benzoyl peroxide, 2.5% or 5%. You can also consider other spot treatments that might incorporate salicylic acid, 1% or 2%. These are very good agents that you can use to spot treat over acne. Just be careful not to apply to larger zones or bigger areas as it can cause irritant contact dermatitis. Thirdly, consider incorporating an AHA or BHA product into your skincare routine. A well-known BHA will be salicylic acid and this can be found in a cleanser. On the other hand, you can also consider leave-in AHA-based products that might contain glycolic acid or lactic acid and this can be commonly found in certain AHA-based toners. Fourthly, consider incorporating a retinoid class product into your routine. You can start with baby retinoid, which is known as retinol. This is commonly available in certain products over the counter and you can start with using that on a nightly routine. On the other hand, if you want to step up and use something a little bit more potent and if your skin can tolerate that, you can consider utilizing a prescription grade retinoid. Prescription retinoids come in different forms. A simple step up would be endopalin, which usually comes in a gel-based formulation and that can again be incorporated into your nightly routine. You can move the step upwards to incorporate then a tretinoin class, like tretinoin 0.025% would be a good next step up. That can be suitable for patients who can use it on the facial zones, and then subsequently, if the skin can tolerate, you can even move up to 0.05%. Higher concentrations are also available, such as 0.1%. This kind of tretinoin is better off on certain areas of the body where the skin is thicker, such as the trunk or the upper shoulders. The fifth point would be incorporating azelaic acid, which is a good start ingredient to consider in any skincare routine. Now, azelaic is not only useful as an exfoliating agent, but also helps with brightening the skin. Hence, it is very useful for acne-prone skin, which also has post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation at the same time, as it can help to fade out these scars and marks. Azelaic can be available in formulations that are at 10% or even at 20%, and sometimes in combination with other brightening agents such as arbutin as well. Finally, we must not forget topical antibiotics for treatments. This can come in the form of clindamycin, which can be a plain formulation, or even clindamycin in combination with benzoyl peroxide, which is even more effective. It can also come in the form of erythromycin, which can also come alone or in combination with other agents such as benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid. Next, moving on from topical treatments and remedies, we can consider now systemic treatments or oral medications. Firstly, let's consider oral antibiotics. Typically utilized are doxycycline, erythromycin, and minocycline. 
The dermatologist will usually incorporate antibiotics into your regime if you have inflammatory acne lesions. If you only have comedonal lesions, you might not be suitable for antibiotics because it is largely going to exert an anti-inflammation effect and eradicate bacteria that causes inflamed acne lesions. In antibiotic classes for the treatment of acne, usually the duration of the treatment can range anything from months duration up to many months duration as well. Now this is given because they are narrow spectrum antibiotics and require that duration of therapy to be effective. Second, we can consider the combined oral contraceptives as well. This is again only utilized in female patients of course, if a female patient has very hormonally influenced acne and also has irregular periods, this might be a suitable choice, especially one that contains an anti-androgen within the balance pack as well. Thirdly, we can consider an anti-androgen such as spironolactone in certain selected female patients. This is utilized especially if you have hormonal acne and do not want to use a combined oral contraceptives. The key about spironolactone also is that you do need to do certain blood investigations before starting this medication, largely to make sure that your potassium levels remain within range while commencing spironolactone. Lastly, let's talk about isotretinoin. This is oral retinoid. It is usually utilized for the more severe forms of acne, largely the nodulocystic forms, even moderate inflammatory acne as well. Isotretinoin is also very useful for acne that is very recalcitrant and keeps relapsing despite maximizing treatment with topicals and even other oral options like oral antibiotics as well. Isotretinoin works by suppressing the sebaceous gland overactivity, reduces hyperproliferation of the keratinocytes at the exit points of the pilosebaceous gland. What all these means basically is just reduces oiliness and trains the oil glands to be more well behaved and hence shuts down the entire inflammatory cascade downstream. As a result, isotretinoin works on almost all forms of acne because it works right at source, right at the sebaceous gland level, shuts down the formation of your non-inflammatory comedones and all the way down to the end point of nodules and cysts as well. Finally, when considering isotretinoin, you must know whether it is a suitable option for you or not. Firstly, if you are a female patient and during reproductive age group, you have to be very careful to consider whether you are planning pregnancy during this time frame because it is actually an FDA class X drug, which means that you should not get pregnant during the course of isotretinoin therapy. You should also ensure that you adequately wash off the effect of isotretinoin before commencing pregnancy planning. This is best for a time frame of at least three months just to be safe because having isotretinoin on board can increase the risk of fetal abnormalities such as malformations. Secondly, isotretinoin also needs certain blood test monitoring, largely your liver function test and your lipid profile. This is the case because in very small select percentage of patients or handful of patients, there can be what we call transaminitis where the liver can be mildly inflamed. However, this usually doesn't happen in most healthy patients and only happens in certain populations that are at risk. So if you take other liver toxic drugs such as alcohol or other medications, be cautious with this and inform your practitioner. Isotretinoin can also give rise to an elevation in your triglycerides and LDL levels. So it's also very important to monitor that and avoid fatty, oily food that's rich in LDL as well. It is also important to note that Fatty and oily food is also not good for acne prone skin, hence it would be good to eliminate this from your diet altogether. Thirdly, isotretinoin can increase the risk of photosensitivity. By this, I mean that you absolutely have to use sunscreen. This increases your risk of photo burns if you go out into strong sun exposure, but this can all be well prevented if you take proper precautions such as using an SPF 50 sunscreen and avoiding strong midday sun. Fourthly, isotretinoin can give rise to unwanted dryness. Now, isotretinoin basically works to reduce sebum production and is great for oily prone skin, especially on the face and on the scalp, but may not be wanted on other drier locations such as your limbs and your trunk. It is also unwanted over the mucosal surfaces such as the eyes and the lips. As such, when you start isotretinoin, be very good with your skincare, use moisturizers on your trunk and limbs, use a lip balm often to prevent lip dryness and chelitis as well. Next, moving up the therapy ladder would be physical or external treatment options. This is really suitable to partner with topical treatments if you're not keen for oral treatments and we will consider the various options below. 
Firstly, let's consider light therapy or LED. Usually, we will utilize blue light LED to kill P. acne bacteria, especially if there are inflammatory lesions and you're not keen to consider oral antibiotics. This may be useful in pregnancy, for example, where systemic therapies such as oral medications will be less indicated. Now, with blue light treatment though, I would caution that if you have pigmentary disorders such as melasma, it would be best to avoid that at the same time. We can also consider LED red light. This is useful for deeper lesions. It is anti-inflammatory as well. So sometimes it is helpful to rotate between blue light and red light to achieve best outcomes. Next, let's consider medical facials with extraction. This can be in a various format, but what we try to do with treatments as such is to clear out any trapped sebum as well as to clear out comedones. It has to be safely done so that we do not get scarring. As we know, inflammatory lesions are best not extracted, do not squeeze and pop inflammatory lesions which will give rise to scarring. Next up, let's consider office-based chemical peels. This will usually be a step up from your home-based AHA and BHA products, usually of a higher concentration of acid. This is very useful for active acne management and also helpful to clear up post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or acne scars at the same time. Chemical pills, however, are not useful or suitable in patients who may have sensitivities and subsequent dermatitis as well. A fourth point would be steroid injections. Now, when do we use steroid injections? Typically, this is for nodular or cystic acne. So, in very inflammatory lesions, putting a small dose of low concentration steroid is very helpful at reducing the severe inflammation. Microbotox is another option to reduce sebum and sebocyte activity. Now, botulinum toxin can be injected in very micro doses intradermally to reduce the sebaceous gland hyperactivity and this can result in less sebum production and also reduce inflammatory lesions downstream as a result of that. Lastly, let's not forget the utility of certain energy-based devices such as lasers in partnership with other topical agents that can be activated in the process. So this is known as phototermal therapy or photodynamic therapy. Here are some tips for managing acne. Firstly, do not overwash. Cleansing twice a day is more than enough. Next, use the cleanser that contains AHA or BHA. Following this, do not squeeze your inflamed acne lesions as it can give rise to unnecessary scarring. Fourthly, do not use too much cosmetic products. It can give rise to occlusion. And lastly, drink lots of water. Take lots of fruits which are rich in antioxidants. In today's video, we talked about the different severity of acne, the treatment options available, and how you can better manage your skin. In my next video, we will share more about how you can manage the side effects of medications for acne and what we can do to manage them. Stay tuned!